Alright, what's up my friends? How's it going today everybody? <sighs> Thought I'd just kick back and just kind of make a, a chill video. You know, I had a couple things I wanted to talk about earlier and I was like, man, never really got around to it. I made a video in the car earlier when I was on my way to the dentist, kind of a two-parter, and I tried to upload it and make a video about it uh, where I linked them together. Totally lost interest in it. I was like, screw it. So, uh, I'll start off by kind of going with my what I did on my day. It was kind of an interesting thing. I wanted to share some stuff I found. I went this morning to get my bridge replaced. I mentioned that I have a I had a missing tooth for a long time and it kept me from really smiling too big and I know that, you know, people that knew me noticed it, but people other people might not notice it as much. And I still have uh, some work to do in the front, but over here I got this bridge done. And I went back today to get the permanent because I had a temporary in and I went back about 9 this morning and I could tell they fit it in and I, the bite wasn't hitting and they were like alright well we're gonna be come back at 1 o'clock and then they sent it back to the lab to get it built up more and I'm glad they did I wanted it to be done right you know um, so I went back and they popped it in basically the tooth was missing between the two and the other two were messed up so I got crowns on those and then a bridge between them so it was a three tooth piece that just clicked on and uh, Yay! It's awesome. I'm stoked. And it got me thinking about, you know, taking those little steps to make us happier and healthier. And I got on this tangent about healthcare, probably on that other video, so it's probably better that I didn't upload it anyway. I, um, so I was on my way back after I went the second time, and I stopped at Goodwill, and I like to just look around for random things. I found a, a lamp, a really cool little uh, blown glass shell turtle lamp for like seven bucks, eight bucks. And I bought that. And there's, I, I used to be a stereo fanatic, so I go in there and look through all their stereo stuff, but not anymore. I, I look at it and, you know, I know what things are worth and I generally just, you know, usually don't walk out buying anything. But I went over to the uh, kind of arts and crafts and beads area where they usually have their artsy stuff, paper and whatnot, and I found a, a bag of thread, <laughs> and this is what, I got this for 12 bucks, uh, all, all of these threads, and it's a sewing, sewing thread of course, it's a dual duty, can't remember what they call it, but it's like a dual core, I looked this shit up, it was 25 bucks, a freaking roll online, <laughs> 25 bucks. And I found them on sale for like 17, 18 bucks. So when I saw that bag for 12.99, I was like, I don't want to spend 13 dollars on thread, but I'll never have to buy thread for the rest of my life sewing. A lot of people who don't sew would be like, well, I'd never use that anyway. But I uh, I have a couple sewing machines, and I'm really into making my own stuff. I think it's fascinating to uh, create your own clothes. So what else did I have? couple things I wanted to talk about. Make sure the camera has time. Oh good, plenty of time. I was going to make a separate video about this, but I figure I'll just throw it into this one. I wanted to talk about knowledge a little bit, but I'm not going to go into any depth on this. It was just a strange coincidence the other day. I was thinking about knowledge and how it's forbidden how it's considered to, if, I'm not saying it's forbidden for all people, but throughout history, in re various religions, you know, seeking knowledge was considered something that was, you know, <laughs> let's just say, even considering that knowledge is not divine in every way, uh, it's just ludicrous to me. You know, a person needs to know the things that they want to know. Um, and the more we know about life, it seems like the easier it is. And I started thinking about the association in, say, Christianity with the serpent and, you know, <laughs> the eating the apple. And right when I was thinking about that, I bumped one of these rocks uh, off my shelf and picked it up, and it was the one with the serpent on it. It has a snake, and I've had this since I was a kid. Got it in a stocking, I think, from my mom. But it's always these strange little things that happen, these little coincidences that happen at the right time. <sighs> And for the last couple of days, I've been thinking about this idea of 
skepticism, if you will. Um, and skeptic itself, the, the term, it, if you will, it means thoughtful. It means paying attention and really looking at things truthfully. It doesn't mean, because skeptic today has received such a bad rap, it's, it's considered almost a, an insult. Oh, don't be such a skeptic. Like, everyone should be a skeptic, as far as I'm concerned. But then just today, another coincidence, a book I ordered a while back on eBay came. And it's uh, Michael Shermer, Why People Believe Weird Things. Pseudoscience, Superstition, and Other Confusions of Our Time. And, uh... You people, you may or not know, may or may not know Michael Shermer. He's uh, he's been on several shows. Whenever there's a show about, you know, psychics or ghosts or anything like that, there's usually Michael Shermer on there. And when he's in his television persona, he's always come across to me as arrogant. And this is something I've noticed with almost all skeptic skeptics or people who consider themselves skeptics um, that they seem arrogant. And I really wanted to, I really wanted to know why, that whether that's an attitude that I convey to in my skepticism, or if the arrogance is not necessarily, maybe it's just a byproduct of facing with facing off with so many people that have such idiotic beliefs. And who am I to say they're idiotic? Well, I'm a human. I can make that decision. Uh, people believe stupid things, and it doesn't mean that they don't have the right to believe it. It means that when they're believing things that they have no evidence for and then they're trying to convince you of it it's very difficult to walk away from it and just say hey agree to disagree because some people will not agree to disagree they will think that there's something wrong with you until you believe what they believe so uh, <clears throat> the idea behind being a skeptic really is trying to come to the truth it's not about trying to pick anyone else anyone else's beliefs apart in fact me as a skeptic i don't go out seeking things to be skeptical about. You see what I mean? It's not like I'm out there looking for things to say, aha, that's not true. But if something crosses my path that I may want to utilize in my life, or learn more about, then I become a full-blown skeptic first, and tear it apart as much as I can. In other words, if I find something that really sounds good, that I really want to believe, let's say I hear of some new, I just try to think of anything off the top of my head, let's say here I find a I read this article and they talk about a particular type of crystal that has been found to have metaphysic properties and when you wear this particular crystal it helps you to attract more uh, good energy from people or you know and, and one way to deal with that would be to just completely blow it off and say Pff, whatever it's bullshit another way would be to completely believe it regardless of doing any research one way would be to believe it and choose not to do research because you want to believe it. And in that case, placebo effect may take place. And this is, I bring placebo in because it's such an important thing to remember that a lot of people who get satisfaction out of their beliefs do so because of the placebo effect. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's a matter of, will that work for everyone? You know, if one person can't convince himself something's true, then there's no point in trying to uh, lie to yourself. And for me, I'm... I look really deep and try to find out reasons why I believe things and don't want to believe things. And uh, in the end, this hasn't taken me further away from finding happiness at all. It's actually done the opposite, and that's kind of where I'm getting at. It seems like a lot of the skeptics pick everyone apart because they don't have any fun or any beliefs of their own. And so they scoff at everyone else. And I'm not like that. I'm, I'm more of trying to find the truth for myself, regardless of what other people believe. I will never try to go out and seek out people to destroy or tear down their beliefs, nor will I sit and try to defend myself against someone who says, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, unless it's a productive argument where we're both gaining something, because a true argument means that both sides are benefiting and profiting, and profiting as far as being rich in knowledge. <laughs> Success is gauged by not the amount of money a person has, but also not the amount of knowledge a person has. It's gained by what type of knowledge a person has and whether that benefits them and those around them and they can utilize it. Um, and otherwise known as integrity, integrating into the world around you. 
Um, sometimes when I say things, I, I think, you know, who am I to say that? You know, who am I to tell other people what integrity is? But in my heart, it's one of the things I know to be true. That integrity means being able to function and cooperate within your framework of your, your life, your social circles. Go ahead and deny it all you want. Pretend like you can live in your own reality and, and live in your own delusion. We all know it's not true. That's not even worth arguing that, you know, a person can, you know, be a selfish monster and still be happy. Or that a person could be a, a killer, you know, and still be in the light of the... It's kind of like looking at the whole of society, not just individual needs. And I think that's part of integrity, because integra integrity means to integrate. So, it's... <clears throat> skepticism for me is a matter of trying to get to the depths of something. And rather than take me further away from what people might call God, um, <clears throat> it's actually brought me closer to understanding what that might be. Um, it's, I'm starting to see in my life how people can reach conclusions through rational thought that cannot be proven. <laughs> that through seeing enough angles of things, you can d make a, draw a conclusion that you're pretty sure about, meaning such as, uh, it goes back to the old prime mover when people talk about God, you know. What started the universe, what started the Big Bang, all of that's just trivial. Because once you get past that thinking and move to the bigger picture, you won't be able to express it, but you'll know what you know. And that's what I'm after, is getting rid of all the foo-foo pseudoscience and nonsense. But at the same time, if I need to believe some of it to get by, then I might do that too. And perhaps that's a crucial aspect of it, knowing ourselves well enough to know when we're fooling ourselves, maybe. I just got into this book, I haven't even gotten into the first chapter, I'm still in the preface, but in the back it says, In our modern age, why do so many people still believe in mind reading, alien abductions, and ghosts? Why do the propon proponents of intelligent design and holocaust deniers find so many followers? With no hold barred assault on popular superstitions and prejudices, Michael Shermer, the founder of Skeptic Society and a champion of science and history, brilliantly debunks these nonsensical claims and explores the very human reason we nonetheless find otherworldly phenomena, conspiracy theories, and cults so appealing. And I want to make a side note before I go here. That doesn't mean that I agree with him. It doesn't mean that I really believe that he's sitting there and going to debunk ghosts and mind reading and psychic abilities in this book. Hell no. I know the guy. I know the research that I've done myself into these things. And I know that there's evidence for things such as psychic connections. Um, that your mind seems to have its own field, your electromagnetic field of your body. Um, without going into detail, we know that there's something there. That there's more that we can't see. That there are invisible forces. But it's when people try to define these forces that it becomes tough to take them seriously. If a person says that ghosts exist, that's a lot different than saying ghosts exist and they're actual souls of people who have lived in the past. Or the person who says, no, they're not souls, they're residual energy forces from a, an intense event that may have happened. Because people see ghost trains and ships, cars, everything you can imagine. So, uh, is it all in a person's mind? Are we deluding ourselves completely? Uh, the, the questions of you know, the big questions are, they're not there to go, wow, it's amazing, the world's, you know, full of all these crazy beings and ghosts and demons. It's, it's, it's not about convincing yourself they exist. It's about saying, if these things are, do exist, to what, can, to what end can we use the knowledge that we have if we can derive conclusions? In other words, if we find out that ghosts are real, and we can prove that ghosts are real, but not just that ghosts are real, we can talk to these ghosts and ask them questions about their lives. We may be left wondering, is this just a projected or manifested, you know, poltergeist, or is, was this a real person? And a person themselves have, has to look into all the stories of, you know, seances and studies on, uh, you know, ghosts, but everybody's seen the Ghost Hunter shows, we know where most of it leads. You hear some creaky noises, you might see something, and nobody knows if it's a person's hallucination or a mass hallucination. Um, there have been several cases of mass hysteria 
like the dancing fever or dancing plague of God the 1600s I think where people danced a couple of people like almost died from exhaustion I think somebody did die these people started dancing in the street and it just took off and people just kept doing it um, this has happened all through history there have been there was like a giggling craze in I think Japan where some schoolgirls started started laughing and this giggling got around the country and it became an actual epidemic of laughing like it's really strange and these things show that there are certain there, there seems to be you know parts of our brain that we don't understand and connections that we don't we can't finalize in our minds so what I'm saying is that even though I'm a skeptic I would never draw the conclusion that all this stuff is fake for me it's about finding the meat in there to see what's real and whether there's anything we can learn about ourselves because if you could prove without a doubt that reincarnation exists or that ghosts are returning people um, it would give people a lot of comfort in knowing that when they die perhaps they don't just die and for an atheist that may seem like well screw it people don't need that comfort but for a person who wants to believe they have every right to want to believe if you're an atheist give religious people a break and consider this <laughs> we live one life here regardless of what we're taught when we're young or where we came from or where we're going we all have to go to bed at night and hope for the best and hope we're gonna wake up in the morning everybody wants to wake up in the morning most people and when you do wake up in the morning you might be overwhelmed with the day-to-day -day activities and eventually it pans out and you go about your your day all we want to know is that all the effort we're putting into this life isn't in vain that it really is worth living, not just for the sake of being alive today, but we can't be in another person's mind. Some people aren't as strong as others when it comes to just saying, well, for example, if an atheist says, well, I'm happy to know that I just, I'll die when I die and I'm good to go. Just earn my money, you know, I'm not saying that atheists are money hungry. I'm, I'm giving an example of an atheist who happens to be uh, the go get him type who just wants to make as much money as he can before he dies. If he's laying on his deathbed and he's happy, then he's done fine for himself. If he's harmed those around him to get there, then, well, that's on them, I guess, because in his belief system it doesn't matter. He got his. Um, but for a person who believes that, you know, has a deeper belief about wanting to help other people, a lot of empathy, a person who gives to help others, even if that giving is just to feel good inside, which is also kind of doing something for yourself, but I won't get into that philosophy doing things for other people and helping others and wanting to know that that after we die all of this knowledge we've accrued carries on somehow and in my life I've come to a realization that it's okay that we go back to dust in other words I don't have anything to hang on to before I was born so after I'm dead so be it that would be nice if my mind carried on in another dimension but knowing what, how different I am right now from the time I was 12, I can't imagine how long I would be in, say, 12 million years, even though time wouldn't matter in that other dimensional. But I believe that we all go back to source. That's, I would give it the name of the all because I believe that everything in this room is included in the all. That everything has its own energy, its own spirit, its own signature. And one day we're going to look back and say, wow, we really didn't know shit, did we? <laughs> like we always do, right? Let's see how much time we got here. I guess that's been a pretty good video. Thanks for joining me. I'll um, I'll see you on the flip side and have a wonderful day. And uh, as always, leave a comment and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Because I'm sure most of the people who are watching this this long probably have been subscribers of mine for a while because I tend to ramble. So, namaste, my friend.